There he is. Whoa, what do we have here? What do we have here? I don't think that's a bluegill. <laughs> well, well, what I was going to show you turned into something a little bit different. Turned into a big old sockeye, as they say in Louisiana, a big old crappie. But that will be fun right there. Absolutely no doubt about that. Woohoo! Big crappie. My goodness sakes alive. Hey guys and girls, want to have some fun just about any place there's water, take you a little ultralight spinning rod like my little Jimmy Houston camo model, a little jig, and I'm going to tell you what size and what to do with it to have some fun catching some bluegill. And you're going to catch about anything that's in the water with this little bait. You're going to get bites if you're around a lot of bluegill, you're going to get bites every single throw. Now, the only thing is you're not going to catch a fish every time he bites because bluegill have pretty small mouths, even big ones. and Probably the best thing to catch them with is a little red wiggler and a bobber, but if you don't have that handy all the time, you can take a little small jig. Now I've got a 30 second ounce jig here, and I'm gonna show you why here in just a minute. Very important that you use a small jig. An eighth ounce, 16th ounce, you're gonna get a lot of bites, but you're not gonna catch a lot of fish. Okay, this is a little Lucky Strike skirted minnow that we use for crappie. And here's what I'm going to do on this. This is a pretty long bait if you're going to have bluegill around. I think we'll catch crappie on it also. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here about halfway. Mm, man, it's good. And uh, I'm going to bite about half of it off. So I'm going to move down to about half the length for these bluegills. I'm going to move down to where my hook is actually coming through down close to, close to where that skirt is, close to where the skirt is. Let's see what happens with that. You need really kind of a small bait on that little 30-second ounce jig. Now that little short bait allowed me to hook that fish even though, so that's what you want to do on the, whatever plastic you're using. I'm using Lucky Strike Minnows. You want, to, you want to shorten that bait down, exactly what you want to do. And that way you can hook them. Now here's one of the nice things. I'm going to go ahead and unhook this fish. Get a hold of them right there, kind of make a circle where you get those, those fins in your hand, and you can un unhook them and turn them back. But I'm going to show you a little trick that I'm doing right here. You see what I've done with this? Now, this the reason I'm using a 32nd ounce jig head is a small hook. The hook size is what's important. You can have an 8th ounce or a 16th ounce as long as you have that tiny hook. But when you move down to 32nd ounce, even when you move to 16th, you're going to get a small hook. You've got to have a small hook to catch bluegill. And you don't want that bait sticking out very far past that hook. So you, the more, the shorter you make that, no matter what kind of soft plastic you're using, the shorter you make it, the better off you are. I've got it down nice and short, and they don't have much sticking out because they'll grab a hold of that tail right there. You want that tail pretty close to the hook. It wouldn't hurt to actually cut it off a little bit more, and I think I may do that. But the little hook is the key to catching bluegill. And I'm going to show you something else that I've done. So let me catch another one. I'll show you something else I've done to make bluegill fishing really, really fun and exciting. Swimming in a little bit, letting it fall down amongst the fish, various depths, they'll be, bluegill will be anywhere from the top to the bottom. You see you're getting a lot of bites, every throw getting bites. And let her swim, let it drop, till you get one that gets that thing in his mouth. It usually be a bigger one when you get it in his mouth. You don't catch too many little ones doing this. Catch fish just like that one I had a second ago. Yeah, I got one. You just kind of keep kind of just barely setting the hook, barely setting the hook. Pretty soon you're going to hook one. Oh my gosh, a big bass, a big bass got after that bluegill. Did you see that? Look at there, look at there, look at there. I got a big bass after the bluegill. See him there? See him trying to eat that bluegill? That bluegill says, get me out of here, Jimmy. A big three or four pound bass come up there trying to eat that bluegill. Okay, now here's what I'm going to show you and, and what I've done. And I'll tell you in a minute, you see that big bluegill? That's a big, beautiful bluegill right there. And you, th you have to have this size bluegill really be around them to fit, fit catch them with a little jig like that. The smaller jig you use, the smaller bluegill you can catch. But you want to catch these great big ones. These are the ones that are a lot of fun. But now here's something. Watch this right here. Watch carefully what I'm going to do. I'm not going to touch that bluegill. See that? You see what happened? Now the reason that happened, the reason that happened is I've got my barb smashed down. You see this barb right here? I'm going to go ahead and take that off. Let's take a look at it. Take that off. I've got the barb smashed down. There's no barb on that. I've just taken a pair of needle nose and I've just smashed that barb down. Be careful and don't hurt the end of your hook. 
I'm gonna bite off a little bit more even. And take that bait and where you can go into that tail. Now you've got this part down here and you see this, this little swimming skirted minnow, lucky striped skirted minnow has got a little indention there that's flat so it'll make it go back and forth. You see the action? A lot of times they're just gonna grab that tail. Now you're gonna need to get them up big enough where they can, they can get up and then get that hook in their mouth because you're gonna have a lot of fish bite that you don't catch. I got like three or four bites before I caught that fish. But this is really, really a fun thing to do. Anywhere you have water, if you live on a lake, you got a boat dock that you go swim off of and stuff, you got a lot of bluegill around it. And if you put a fish feeder down there, you're gonna really load up a lot of fish. And you can have fun anytime you wanna go down there and pick your rod and reel up and go fishing. Because you're gonna get a lot of bluegill around there. If there's catfish in the lake, you're gonna get a lot of catfish. You can do this around bridge pilings. Anywhere there's water, I mean, you could actually probably fish a sewer and, uh, and, 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 and catch fish like my buddy Ty does. He fishes sewers and catches fish. I had one there and he got off and I caught the grass instead. I don't want you grass, you can go back. There's another one right there. You see, all I'm doing is pitching it out there and letting it fall. Now this is not very big. I haven't caught any real giants. You can see the size, that's, that's, that's really a fairly decent size bluegill, but not very big. Now again, you see the way he is right there? Now he's got his fins out, that's what they do. You wanna handle them, you wanna make a circle with your hand. Come right in here and push that, push those fins down. That way you can unhook that fish. Beautiful, beautiful copper nose bluegill. Pretty good sugar too. But now like I said, you can unhook that fish without even touching it. And that's what makes them fun to catch. You teach your kids to do that. They won't get fin, they won't be afraid to Afraid of the fish are very, very easy to handle. This is just a super way to have a lot of fun if you don't have any live bait. You just keep your rod and reel around. It's got some small jig heads on it, 16th ounce, 32nd ounce. The key thing is a small hook. You want to find jig heads, it's got a small hook. That small hook can handle a really, really big fish. I've got 20 pound braided line on here. I've got a little eight or 10 pound leader on the, on the end of it. You can see that fish out there a bit just as while it was falling. And I said you're going to catch a lot of big ones. They're getting smaller, but now you notice that I'm catching them a lot better. Get back in the water there, little guy. I'm catching them a lot better since I, since I, uh, since I shortened that bait down. That's the key. You don't want to have too much plastic off away from your hook. You want to have a fairly short bait. That way, when they get that bait, they're going to get the hook too. But they'll bite the end of those. The bluegill are really bad about doing that. So if you that's what happens on a plastic worm a lot of times. They're just grabbing the end of it. You do a lot of jerking. You go through a lot of plastic worms. You don't catch them. But you're going to get a lot of bites. I mean, you're going to get a lot of bites doing this. And one of the things you can do once he kind of gets tore up a little bit, just go find you a new little spot to attach that, that worm, that little piece of plastic to. Just find you a new little spot. You can catch several fish on one little piece of plastic. You can take a little, little bag of these, and they'll last you a long time and catch a lot of fish. When you get those bluegill going, and one of the things about it, bluegill are like chickens. When you get them going, they're ready for something to hit the water. The more you catch, the faster the bite normally gets. Surprised we hadn't caught some more crappie here. Caught that one crappie right off the bat. That's the only one we caught, but we're catching a lot of bluegill before it gets down to the right depth probably to catch a crappie. You're gonna catch bass. All right, he got hung up. Got down there and got hung up. <laughs> Not a very big bass. Same thing on the bass. Now I can handle that bass or I can probably take a hold of the jig and maybe unhook him without touching him. That's the deal, smash that barb down. You can have a lot of fun. And if you're kids, you know, this is one of the things too, you can turn a youngster that's three or four years old loose with one of these on the dock fishing or around a bridge piling or or wherever, fishing off the bank. And if you got that barb smashed down, he happens to get the barb in his hand, slips right out, doesn't out below the barb. It'll still hurt, but it'll kind of teach him how to handle hooks without worrying about getting hooked real badly at all. So it's just like you're turning your fish loose real quickly like that, turn the kid loose real quickly like that too. I've seen little kids throwing and catch their own ear. I run a hook right through their ear. Do you have that barb smashed down? You have that barb smashed down, it's not a problem at all. They're gonna cry and it's gonna hurt a little bit, 
but they're not hooked that uh, requires any action because that that hook is smooth it'll come right out come right out of them and if you turn kids loose with hooks and rods and reels somebody's going to get hooked hey we do it as adults so the kids are going to do it too smash those barbs down great thing to do while you're bluegill fishing even if you're fishing with a with an earthworm you're using wigglers or little red night crawlers or something like that even if you're doing that even if you're using those little Berkeley makes those little red wiggler type things and they're artificial they work really good for bluegill really good for bluegill you can put them just on a small hook the key to the whole deal is small hooks that's the key so take whatever crappie jigs you're using Get the ones that's got the smallest hooks on them. Usually that's a 32nd ounce. Sometimes 16th ounce have the same. Eighth ounce, you normally move up to a little bit larger hook. An eighth ounce is one that I use for crappie a lot. You can see, I'm, I'm just letting that drop out there. Whoop, that didn't come off. That one come off. I'm just letting it drop, that little lucky strike minnow bait. Now this one's getting ripped a little bit. As it gets ripped a little bit, I'm just gonna take it and move it around it doesn't matter how you have that hook. I'm gonna come into another place there. Now I've got a whole new spot that I've got, got my bait on. Come here, baby, come here, baby. Come here, little baby doll. <laughs> Look at, oh, that big bass got it. That big bass got that fish and broke my leader. That big bass got it. All of a sudden that fish grew. I mean grew, and looky here. I got a little leader on the end of it and it broke my leader, broke my leader. I gotta go tie me a new bait on. I might try it a little bit different color. Okay, we have a chartreuse head on. Let's see if that'll, what that'll do. I guarantee you they can see it. Isn't that just like a fisherman? I was getting bites, catching fish on a white head, so I changed to a chartreuse. <laughs> uh, none of y'all do that, do you? Catch them on something, change it different, something else. I kept the same bait, just different color. Actually, same tail too. Little skirted, lucky, lucky strike, skirted minnow. Lucky skirted minnow. Ooh, that's the right color. Let's see if I can get him in without a big bass getting him. Wasn't that cool? Wasn't that cool? That's that big bass I saw a minute ago. He's about a four pounder. These guys are fighting up the top. You see how that fish fought. Now you look at the size of that fish. That is a big old giant bluegill right there. That is a beauty. Now let's see if I can unhook him by not touching the fish. You see the way he sticks those fins out? By not touching the fish because I got my barb down. See how simple that is? <laughs> I love it. I love it when a plan comes together. Woohoo! Come here, baby doll. Come here, baby doll. Look at the way they pull. Will you look at that? I still hadn't got a real giant one. Oh, the bass. Two, two bass is after him. Two bass is after him. Two bass. Look at that. Two bass. See that? I'm not gonna let him get you, boy. <laughs> there was two bass after him. That's a pretty nice size bluegill. Takes a pretty good size bass to eat a bluegill like that. All right, let's try a little hook release. Is that cool or is that cool? That is barbless hooks right there. Why won't one of those bass bite with this bait? That's what I wanna have happen. Whoop, I got my bait, got my bait. One of the things that's gonna happen though, I'm telling you with, uh, with your uh, with your, uh, this is what you want to get right here. It's a little lucky minnow baits. They come in several different kinds, a lucky sickle tail, a lucky skirted minnow, lucky curly tail. They come with all kinds of different stuff. But one of the things that will happen with your barb smash down is they will pull that tail off some because your barb actually holds that tail on. Same way when you're fishing a plastic worm out there, you're gonna pull the tail off some. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave the whole thing on there and just see what happens. Might take me a minute or two to catch them. We may have to go ahead and bite it off. I'm gonna leave the whole tail on there because I think with a little bit bigger tail, you can see the way that it's got that little cut in the in the in the in the tail there that makes that action. See how it goes back and forth. That is a dynamite crappie bait, and that's a great size to catch big crappie. Might be able to catch that bass. Let's see if we can catch a bluegill. Now it needs to be shorter down, no doubt about it. One of them's liable to bite my tail off. We'll just see what'll happen. There's one that got the hook. There's one that got the hook, and he's not a very big one either. <laughs> Get me out of here, I see that bass down there. Oh, there he is. <laughs> That's amazing.
That is amazing, those bass coming up trying to eat that. <laughs> That's not a giant one there, but you get the idea, boys and girls. That a small jig, smash that barb down, put you a little lucky minnow tail of some sort on there. You might have to cut that tail in, down in two. I caught that fish with it full long, but by having that, you never have to handle the fish. Just reach out there, shake them a little bit, they'll slide right off, and you can go back to fishing. Guys and girls, catch those bluegill, take your kids out, have some fun, and I'm telling you, you'll love it too. The lighter the rod, the more fun you're going to have. And remember, I sure do love you.